Hello, my name is Anna Mazora, and this is my partner, Rhea Andrews, and today we'll be presenting on prader rolli syndrome. So here we have a quick agenda, our overview, clinical features, etiology, fictional client, role of occupational therapy, and our intervention session. So prader rolli syndrome is a very rare, complex neurodevelopmental disorder that impacts multiple body systems. It's caused by abnormalities in the region of the paternally inherited chromosome 15Q11 to Q13, which affects the regulation of gene expression. The gene alterations impact the metabolic, endocrine, and neurological systems. Therefore, clients with PWS develop hypothalamic dysfunction, and the disorder is further accompanied by intellectual and behavioral deficits. There is no distinct cure for this disorder, and the clinical course varies for each individual. Um, studies have shown that early diagnosis and multidisciplinary treatment can improve their quality of life, and they may have an average life expectancy. However, it's very unlikely that they'll be able to live fully independent lives. They may engage in volunteer work or part-time jobs, but still live with their families. And although their capacity for physical affection is normal, intim intimacy issues may arise due to hypogenitalism. So next here are some clinical features. With infancy, um, hypotonia is the clini initial clinical manifestation, followed by decreased movement, lethargy, poor sucking reflex, underdeveloped genitals, poor responsiveness, poor responsiveness to stimulation, and failure to thrive. Many infants actually experience fatigue with feeding and poor weight gain due to insufficient calorie intake. Um, therefore, feeding tubes are used to assist with their growth and development. However, infantile hypotonia and poor sucking reflex can improve over time. Um, some distinct facial features include almond-shaped eyes with strabismus, narrowing of the temples, and a thin upper lip, which can initially be presented during infancy and can evolve. And as the child gets older, between two and six years old, a defining feature is a change of appetite with the onset of, hy of hyperphagia. These children can have the inability to feel satiety. This results in excessive eating and the emergence of childhood obesity. And going a little bit further, so when in, when these individuals reach middle childhood, we can see that they're short in stature. They may present with some mild to moderate intellectual disability, which may affect their school performance and their ability to participate in educational opportunities. Um, and they may present with some developmental delays, cognitive impairments, so having issues with abstract thinking, task switching, and memory. So those transitional times between different activities may be extremely challenging for them, which can show up as some behavioral issues, which can be shown through temper outbursts and skin picking. And skin picking is a really common behavioral uh, issue that these individuals may present with because they are unable to help themselves modulate and they get very upset about certain behaviors such as hyperphagia, like Anne had previously mentioned. So that is driven by behaviors and they will be food seeking, hoarding food, or stealing food or money in order to um, satisfy themselves. And if they're not given these things, then the temper tantrum outbursts will happen and skin picking is really likely to occur. Next slide, please. So for the etiology, um, research has shown that on the physiological level, there is a defect on chromosome 15 that disrupts the normal function of the hypothalamus, which controls the release of hormones. So there's deficiency in growth, hunger, and sexual development. So if PWS is caused by a different change of chromosome 15, such as imprinting defici deficits, there are a chance of, there's a chance of inheritance, as, so it's a 50% um, recurrent risk. So as for the molecular level, there's three main genetic deletions on chromosome 15. So the primary one, as Anne mentioned, is the paternal deletion, which occurs in about 60 to 75% of individuals who present with PWS. And then for maternal uni, parental disomy is about 20 to 30 percent of individuals and then there's subtype 2a and subtype 2b subtype 2a comes from the same grandmother or grandfather will have that deletion of the chromosome and it will be inherited to the individual and then subtype 2b is from one grandmother or or and then the other one is from the other grandfather and then the last um is is atypical deletion which occurs in five percent of individuals and lastly, for an environmental level, so occupational exposure, so jobs such that are associated with increased hypocarbons, drug use, and infections can lead to an individual having presented with PWS. So here's a fictional client. His name is Derek Miller. He's a five-year-old Caucasian boy who is diagnosed with PWS at three years old. He lives with his mom, Jessica, and two grandparents in a one-story household in LA, and he loves anything and everything dinosaur-related. 
also loves coloring rainbows and wearing button-up shirts. Derek displays hyperphagia, stubbornness, and temper tantrums, and to prevent outbursts around food, his parents let him eat whatever he wants, because when he's upset, he tends to pick a skin. He also has difficulty playing on the playground at school and falls and bumps into objects due to somatic dyspraxia, and in outdoor activities, he freezes and runs away, making it challenging for him to make friends. Over time, he started having difficulty with ADL, specifically dressing, due to fine motor deficits and practice issues as a result of mild ID. And he can't attach buttons, therefore he requires max assistance from his caregivers. Um, Derek's teacher has mentioned his emotional dysregulation to his parents, and his parents further express their concerns about his inability to dress, engage in outdoor play, frequent behaviors like skin picking and hyperphagia. So his pediatrician referred him to occupational therapy in an outpatient setting to address these underlying issues. And below here, you can see the client factors that are impacted. Since Derek has difficulty with fine motor deficits and he has somatic dyspraxia, the occupations we chose targeted those three underlying skills. So our goals are about our goals revolve around the occupations of sensory motor play, dressing, and lastly, nutrition management. So our first STG is Derek will complete 15 minutes of sensory motor play with two preferred playground equipment with moderate assistance for safety and four verbal cues using two sensory strategies and at most three interfering behaviors by the end of four OT sessions. For dressing, Derek will manage large buttons with mod A and 75% accuracy using four visual cues and three verbal cues within four OT sessions. And lastly, for nutrition management, Derek will identify fruits, vegetables, and grains with min assistance using three visual cues and two verbal cues with at most three interfering behaviors within three OT sessions. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the overview of how PWS or how PWS is intervened through occupational therapy, but just to touch on a few points here, so they can, as Anne mentioned, a fine motor and gross motor development are usually presented with deficits. So occupational therapists can assist with that that those types of interventions, as long um, along with sensory integration. So ASI will be really important here because of the somatodyspraxia issues that our client is presenting with, as well as balance, posture, and muscle strengthening for tone, and then coordination, and then of course our uh, ADLs. So for the intervention session, we're going to start with brushing protocol because Derek presents with somatodyspraxia. So we need to um, increase that registration and discrimination of um, tactile and proprioceptive input. So he's able to um, recognize the sensations while also helping him modulate for the further OT session. And then our first activity is going to be sensory motor play. And the purpose of our sensory motor play will be designed as a Jurassic Park event because he loves dinosaurs. And the purpose is to challenge his balance, core strength, lower extremity strength, improve his somatodyspraxia by doing those right and left discrimination activities, which you'll see throughout the intervention session. We want to improve his postural stability and balance. So he'll be sitting on a swing and we'll be giving that just right challenge by, ch by having him kick with different things. Um, and increasing his registration and discrimination of proprioceptive and tactile input because of that somatodyspraxia. So for the second activity, we focus on dressing. Um, since he has difficulty with dressing, we have provided him with lots of proprioceptive and tactile input with a movement sit cushion and additional probe with a weighted toy. So in this video, we fed our little doggy ketchup with some kibbles that required him to open the balls and retrieve it. This works a lot with fine motor skills as well as in-hand manipulation of shifting, translation, and rotation, which are the precursor to buttoning. Um, because of Derek's mild intellectual disabilities, we used video, video modeling and we addressed his dyspraxia by asking him for the following steps, then cueing him if he's unable to do so. Derek also got highly irritated because he had difficulty, so we provided him with a fidget toy he enjoys to prevent skin picking and regulate his emotions. The last activity we did is nutrition management. Um, since Derek has difficulty with managing his food intake due to hyperphagia, we focus a lot on educating him on healthy eating since it's essential to ensure optimal growth and development. Um, we did this by providing him activities that are preferred, playful, and engaging. So Derek loves coloring rainbows with various markers and colors. Therefore, we, adapt we adopted a study by Varman et al. to incorporate arts and crafts to learn more about healthy ingredients. We had Derek color a rainbow template, and we had him link the rainbow colors to healthy fruits and vegetables. Afterward, out of the seven ingredients, we had Derek choose five to make a healthy meal plate. So now we'll be moving on and watching our intervention video. Hi, Derek. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. You're you? good? Good. I'm Raya. We're going to be playing today. Are you really excited? <gasps> I'm excited. Okay. These first, I want you to pick your favorite color of the magic brush. Mm, I like blue. 
You like blue? Okay. And do you want to go ahead and feel this magic brush? Ooh, it feels pretty. You like it? Yeah, it feels pointy. Okay. And what we're going to do with this magic brush is brush the magic on us, okay? Okay. So do you want to brush me? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. This? Yes. Perfect. Ooh. Fun, isn't it? it? I'm getting all magic up. <gasps> you magic up, magic up. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try and brush yourself? Yeah. Okay. Just back and forth. Yeah, back and forth. <gasps> Great job. Do you feel the magic? I do feel the magic. Okay, good. Now, can I brush you? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to sing a song? Okay. What song do you want to sing? Do you like Disney? I do love Disney. What Disney song do you like? Um, what's the, when you wish oh, upon like a star, there's no difference who you are. Okay. Put your arm down. Arm down? Yes. Okay. Hmm, what's another one? Do you like, oh, what about Christmas? I like Christmas. Christmas is coming up. Christmas is soon. You're so right. Okay, what Christmas song do you want to sing? Uh, hmm. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. Go ahead and stand up for me, please. All of the other reindeers used to laugh and call him names. Oh my oh, gosh! How does that make you feel? Do you see the same smell? Okay. That's, That's the, the pepper! 
ketchup feels ketchup really feels so good. good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Can you name me something with the color orange? Uh, um, my ball at home. Oh, you have an orange ball? Mm hmm. The next one is yellow. yellow. Yay. Like the sun. Mm -hmm. The sun is a bright yellow color. Okay, we're almost done coloring our rainbow. Yay. Rainbow. Green like a dinosaur. Like the dinosaur we saved earlier. Yay. I love the dinosaur. We're going to see the dinosaur soon too at the museum. Yay. Blue. Blue like the like the ocean or the sky. Or the sky. And we saved the dinosaur in the water. Too. And we saved the dinosaur in the water. Okay, last one. So purple. Purple. My mommy loves purple. My mommy loves purple too, dear. <laughs> wow. Her bedroom wall is all purple. Wow. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, Derek, you finished the rainbow. Yay. Yay. So now we have this pretty basket of fruits and vegetables. Oh, okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to match the fruit with the color. Okay. So this one is a tomato. Tomato. What color is a tomato? Red. Red, red, red. red. Okay, do you know what this one is? An orange. An orange. It's Cutie orange. Cutie orange. Orange goes with orange. <gasps> Good job. What about this one? I don't like bananas. I don't like Ugh. bananas either. Gross. <laughs> bananas are yellow. They're yellow, but they're also really good for you too. Oh. And this one is a little cucumber. It's green. Mm -hmm. It's green. And we have two more, okay? Okay. What's this? Blueberry? Blueberry! Woo! Blue! Blueberry. And last one we have... What is this? I don't know what that is. This one's called an onion. An onion? <laughs> okay! A purple onion. Purple! Yeah, it goes with purple! Yay! Okay, now we have our fruits and vegetables. Okay. I'm gonna add... I'm gonna add this one. This okay. one. Okay. A burger. A, I love burgers. I love, I love burgers. Okay. I love burgers. <laughs> and this one is a hot dog. Oh, hot dogs! I like hot dogs I like too. Hot dogs too. Okay. So Derek, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the healthy fruits and vegetables into our plate. Okay. okay. So can you tell me which ones you think are the healthy? I love burgers. So burger. I love burgers too. But this is actually not good for you to eat every day. Oh. So we're gonna put the burger back. Okay. 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 An orange. Mm-hmm. Orange is a fruit. Okay. It's a healthy fruit. Cucumber too. Mm -hmm. I love cucumbers. Um, do you like the black like orange? Okay. Cucumbers. <laughs> um, tomato red tomato. Red tomato is really healthy too. Okay. Banana. I don't want banana on the plate. I don't, I don't like banana. Banana is really healthy for you. I don't like it, but okay. Maybe next time we can try. Um, do you like smoothies? I like smoothie milkshake smoothies. You like milkshakes. Have mm -hmm. you tried banana milkshakes? Not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could try a little bit of. Okay. Oh, blueberries. Blueberries. And the onion. Mm -hmm. The onion's really healthy. <gasps> you made a healthy food plan. Yay! Fun. No hot dogs no either. Hot dogs. Oh. Good job, Derek. Look at your healthy food plan. Yay! Derek, so you made a healthy food plan today. Yay! Are you excited to try these? Um, a little. A little bit. Okay. So maybe we can try a little bit of it. Okay. And then I'll tell your mom and he'll let me know. And you can let me know how you're feeling. Okay. Yay. Okay, Derek. So that's all for today. Woo! We finished our session. I can't wait to come back. Yay. Okay, I'll see you next time. See you next time. Yay. And then here are references.
Thank you. Thank you.